How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news, announcing peace, proclaiming words of happiness. Well, our God reigns. Yes, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, yes, Jesus reigns. Well, our God reigns. Our God reigns. And that is the peace that we announce this morning on this beautiful September 27. We announce peace, that he brings peace. He brings it on the mountains. He brings it in the valleys. He brings it as people cross the seas. He brings it to every land. I proclaim today he's bringing peace to America. His peace, not man's peace that comes and goes and gets all diluted and messed up by man, but his peace. Do you have his peace in your heart? Well, I pray that the word of God this morning will add to it or will give it to you wherever you are in your life. The Lord knows every detail. He counted all the hairs on your head. Yeah, as you messed around with them. I thought of that, pushing them here and there. <laughs> Trying to do something with all the white ones. All right. Let us go forward with this good attitude that we have the chance to hear the word of God this morning. And the word of God was transforming us into the very image of Jesus. Nothing could be better than that. Nothing. So I welcome each and every one of you this morning. Wow. Your names are just bring love to me, brings comfort to me, brings friendship to me, all of the wonderful things that the Lord provides. And I want to thank you all. Each and every one of you are such a blessing to me. All right, we are in Isaiah chapter 51 this morning. Connie's just right on the ball, just typing it all out. Melissa's there with all of the graphics. Kathy has already done all this work of searching and finding all these great graphics. And oh, they are so beautiful. Please, please don't miss. Don't forget to go and see Kathy's graphics. They will bless you with the reading of this word. Isaiah 51, listen to me, Isaiah tells them from God. Listen to me who follow after righteousness, so that includes us. You who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn. Oh, Kathy's got a beautiful graphic on there, this huge rock. I didn't have time to, to look and see if there was an explanation, but it sure was impressive. Look to the rock. We're talking about a bigger rock than the rock. Yes, the rock. The rock. Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Remember what shape your life was in before? Down in the deep, struggling with every area, and God brought you up with his beautiful salvation. Look to Abraham, your father, Isaiah cries, and to Sarah who bore you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. And isn't that amazing to think about in your, in your heart again? <clears throat> Abraham just took the call of God and went out all on his own, and he didn't know where he was going. Boy, you talk about faith. Faith to believe that I will have food, I will make it, I will end up somewhere. Oh, hallelujah. You see, we can give him our lives and he will do that also. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden. How about that future dream? And vision. Can you imagine all of the wilderness desert areas of Israel becoming like the Garden of Eden? Well, hang on. Hang on. God can do it all. 
and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, O my nation, for law will proceed from me, and I will make my justice rest as a light of the peoples. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands will wait upon me, and on my arm they will trust. Oh, can you picture yourself fulfilling what is being read? Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look on the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish away like smoke. The earth will grow old like a garment. Oh, surely we're seeing that many places. And those who dwell in it will die in like manner. Whoa. But my salvation will be forever and my righteousness will not be abolished. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, you people in whose heart is my law, do not fear the reproach of men. Oh, these are good words for today. Nor be afraid of their insults. Don't be afraid of what they have to say. God's going to wipe them out. For the moth will eat them up like a, gar a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. So we have hope for our children, our grandchildren, the coming generations. Awake, awake, put on strength. O arm of the Lord, awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Are you not the arm that cut Rahab apart? And wounded the serpent? Are you not the one who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep that made the depths of the sea a road that they crossed over on and it was dry? They didn't have bunny feet for the redeemed to cross over. So the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Yes, flee away. Give it to the Lord and he will cause it to flee away. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. I, even I am he who com comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man who will die and of a man, the son of a man who will be made like grass? And you forget the Lord your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. You have feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor when he has prepared to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hastens that he may be loosed that he should not die in the pit, and that his bread should not fail. But I am the Lord your God, who divided the sea whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name, and I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens, lay the foundations of the earth and say to Zion, you are my people. Awake, wake, stand up, O Jerusalem, 
You who have drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury, you have drunk the dregs of the cup of trembling and drained it out. There is no one to guide her among all the sons she has brought forth, nor is there any who takes her by the hand among all the sons she has brought up. These two things have come to you. Who will be sorry for you? Desolation and destruction, famine and sword. By whom will I comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets like an antelope in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of your God. We might see a display along these lines in our own land here pretty soon. Pretty soon. They're all about to go down. Therefore, please hear this, you afflicted, and drunk but not with wine. Thus says the Lord, the Lord and your God, who pleads the cause of his people. See, I have taken out of your hand the cup of trembling, the dregs of the cup of my fury. You shall no longer drink it, but I will put into the hand of those who afflict you, who have said to you, Lie down that we may walk over you, and you have laid your body like the ground and as the street for those who walk over. Are you a little tired of being walked over on? Me too. Awake! Awake! Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there, and then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, says the Lord, that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them Make them wail, says the Lord. And my name is blasphemed continually every day. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I who proclaims peace. Announcing peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, proclaiming words of happiness. Your God reigns. Your God reigns. Yes, your God reigns. Oh, yes, our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Yes, our God reigns. Let's not forget it for a moment. He has not gotten up off of that throne, and he has no intentions of getting up off of it. He is reigning, even now, even though it doesn't look like it in some places. But we can say how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices, and with their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see 
eye to eye. Oh, when the Lord brings back Zion, break forth into joy, sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. And oh my goodness, that's what we're seeing. We're watching him bring them all back. Woo, hallelujah. <clears throat> he has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, go out from the midst of her, be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord, for you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. He's going to be in front. He's going to be in the back. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high, just as many were astonished at you. So his visage was marred more than any man. Oh, can you even stand to think what he looked like when they got done with their torture and their beatings and his form more than the sons of men. So see, even back here, Isaiah is giving a prophetic word about Jesus on the cross. This is what will happen. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Sprinkle with what? I can only think of one thing, his blood. Sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them they shall see, and what they had not heard they shall consider. And we move right along to chapter 53 of Isaiah. And oh my goodness, this, this is just a, a highlight in the book. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, we are healed. Oh, let's take all that seriously. That's what he did for you, my precious brothers and sisters. That's what he did for me. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Oh, that's the, that's the greatest definition of sin. We've turned to our own way, our own way. What is our own way? Sin. And the Lord has laid on him, laid on him, the iniquity of us all. My sins, your sins, put on him. We should have paid for our own sins, but we weren't able. 
No, oh, look what it took for him to do it. He was oppressed and he was afflicted and yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off, crucified from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. No deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities, your iniquities, my iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Even yet today, the, the word of God tells how he is at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for you and for me. That's what he's doing with his time. Still loving, still reaching out, still interceding, in agreement with his heavenly Father, in agreement with Holy Spirit, who we have here. Just think of the majesty of these words, the majesty, the plan of God, fulfilled by his Son, Jesus, the Messiah. Fulfilled. He was able to cry, it is finished, and it was there's nothing else needed to be done for your salvation. Nothing. It is done. You just need to receive it. Oh, do that today. Do it fresh today. Let's all do it fresh today. Let's say words of repentance and acceptance unto our God today. Let's keep it fresh. Let's keep all the sin totally washed, washed clean, washed white, our black sin by the precious blood that he gave for you and me. No one else did it. No one else is ever going to do it. And you aren't going to do it for yourself either. And you aren't going to do it for anybody else either. And praise God, we don't need to. Jesus has done it. It's finished. And now we can walk and live in him, which allows us to go right on to Ephesians chapter 5 and hear what Paul has to say as Paul walked in him. Ephesians chapter 5, <clears throat> therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, 
let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. They're out in left field in their sin. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Walk away. For you were once darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Oh, that's what we are doing today and we need to do it more boldly even. Expose the darkness that is trying to snuff out America, trying to snuff out her being the Christian nation that brings the gospel to the rest of the world. Oh, have no fellowship with them. Go on with the Lord. There are people in your life, you've tried to witness to them for a long time. And you know, some of those people you need to just let go of now. You sowed the seeds. Don't let them keep eating up your time and dragging you down. Let go of them, even if you have to tell them. Just say, I, I've proclaimed everything to you about Jesus, and you resist, and I don't have any more time for you. I need to go on. That may be the very thing that gets them to come. Just a suggestion for some. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done to them, done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. And therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeem your time. Don't just let it be nothing but you cooking and feeding yourself and pleasures. and No, we have a commission, y'all. And some of it is not easy to do. But we need to be about the gifts that God has put in us, giving those out and doing those things. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. Look up dissipation. Wow. I mean, it, it is really some word. And in other words, it means if you keep doing that, it's going to take you down in every area of your life. Your walk with the Lord, you're attending uh, holy things and services. It'll affect your mouth. You won't speak as kindly as you used to. You might start listening to junk, watching terrible shows on TV or whatever, knock off all that stuff. Knock it all off. Don't give time to all that. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, 
but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you think you can carry a tune or not. Just sing. Just sing. He didn't say anything about it being right on key or melodious. He just said, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is is head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore just as the as the church is subject to christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything and he might be an unbeliever sam was an unbeliever for years but i submitted and sometimes ugh, it was hard it was hard, but I went ahead. I tried to do things like cook his favorite things. And, and when he wanted to go somewhere, go anyway, if I wanted to or not. He had a motorcycle for a while and he ran with a bunch that all they wanted to do was get on the motorcycle and end up in some bar drinking. So I did it and I drank my Coke or my Sprite. Oh, they were so upset. Oh, have a beer, Jane, have a beer. Well, no. No, you see, guys, and I would just tell them, I'm, I already came drunk. I came drunk on the Holy Ghost. So I, I just need to drink some Sprite. Boy, that shut them up. And they didn't want me along on the ride either. <laughs> and pretty soon, Sam saw the light of all that, and we quit all that crap. So see, he will work out issues in your life. He will work out issues. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Boy, now there is a wake-up call sentence, if I ever read one, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the word, washing of water by the word, by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And that's what we're working on today. Don't quit going because of something that happened. Get over it. We're getting out the spots and the wrinkles. And that doesn't mean quit. It just means go ahead and keep coming and the spots and the wrinkles will get worked out but that she should be holy and without blemish. That's the goal. That's the goal. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones and for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife in marriage what is marriage one man and one woman and none of the other fooling around stuff. Not two men, not two women. No, no. One man, one woman. The other arrangements, by the sinfulness of man, <clears throat> that's just what they are in the eyes of the Lord. They're an abomination. And if you're into something like that, get out of it. You don't want to risk eternal hellfires. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. Get out 
of such a relationship and come to the Lord and repent. He has a good mate for you, if that's your desire. And I'm talking a wife for a man and a husband for a lady and nothing else. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. There you have it. And that is from the Holy Ghost, carrying the words of the Lord, of God, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We move right along to Psalm 69. Psalm 69, we're going to pick up with verse 19. We already began to read it the other day. So Psalm 69 verse 19 you know my reproach david cries my shame and my dishonor david is repenting of his own sexual sin with bathsheba amongst other things my adversaries are all before me reproach has broken my heart and i am full of heaviness I looked for someone to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They also gave me gall for my food. And now here is a reference. And I think it's kind of like a parallel of David's misery. This is what happened on the cross to Jesus. They gave me gall for my food and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink pour yourself a cup of vinegar and see if you like it for your thirst let their table become a snare before them and their well-being a trap let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and make their loins shake continually Pour out your indignation upon them and let your wrathful anger take hold of them. Woo! Let's just read this aloud today. This is, these aren't our words. These are God's words. <clears throat> but let's read these words thinking about all of this needs to happen today. Let your wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their dwelling place be desolate. Let no one live in their tents, for they persecute the ones you have struck and talk of the grief of those you have wounded. Add iniquity to their iniquity and let them not come into your righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the books of the living. Woo! <clears throat> and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let your salvation, O God, set me up on high. And I will praise the name of God with a song. And I will magnify him with thanksgiving. And we have all of these wonderful songs from David praising God. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bull, which has horns and hooves. The humble shall see this and be glad. And you shall seek God. Your hearts shall live. For the Lord hears the poor and does not despise his prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. For God will save Zion. 
Zion and build the cities of Judah. And we are seeing that. We have been seeing that. Israel, by God's providential hand, became a nation in 1948. And we've seen them transform that desert into a beautiful country that the whole world wants to go see. And they're not finished yet. That they may dwell there and possess it. And that's what they're doing. Also, the descendants of his servants shall inherit it. And those who love his name shall dwell in it. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. You need to get, take a trip to Israel. You need to go to the land that you're precious Jesus walked. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then there, there's a wonderful film out. Um, let me think of it now. Shouldn't even have started it without it being on my lips. It's the whole story of the road. All right, Route 60. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The title of the movie is Route 60. 60. You need to see it. Route 60 is the road that starts at the top in Nazareth and it goes right straight down the middle of all of Israel down to the bottom to Beersheba. And they all of the towns and cities, Jerusalem, all they all branch off of that. That would have been the road that Jesus walked. Please go see it. You will be blessed. You will be blessed to see where Jesus walked. All right, let's wrap it all up today with Proverbs chapter 24, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 7. I'm sure it's probably all written right on there while I've been talking. Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. A fool just keeps on being a fool, doesn't he? He needs to get born again, doesn't he? So if you know some fools, pray for them. We were once lost. Pray for them. Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate. And you know, the gate is where all the wise men met, and they sat, and they discussed things, and came up with answers, and <clears throat> tried to speak wisdom. The fool just sits there. He doesn't have any wisdom to open up his mouth, so he just sits there. Praise God, he's listening. And many fools, they don't come at all. So this is a very potent proverb here. Very potent also for our day that we are living in. Whew. All right, y'all. I don't know about you, but woo we I have enjoyed the word of God this morning. How awesome it is. And let's spend time here in prayer. Father God, <clears throat> we bless you and we give you thanksgiving for your precious word. It is rich and wonderful, and we are happy to be fed by your word. We'd ask, Lord, that you would forgive our sins, that you would wash them away in your blood, that we might be clean before you. Please, Lord, please, we come to you. And we're asking that we could start this new day walking in righteousness, not dragging the sin from yesterday, but letting it be washed away and looking and building a new day in our life. Father God, we hold up Jerusalem and we pray for her peace, the peace for Jerusalem. Precious God, we'd ask that all of your people would be blessed today, that you would keep calling them by your Holy Spirit and drawing them unto you and bringing more today from everywhere in the world, bringing them home to live now on the land that you promised them. It's a beautiful, great prophecy for us to see. 
Thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing. Thank you for what you are doing in America. You are bringing evil down. You are bringing evil down. You are exposing. And Lord, I'm asking that you open up the eyes and the ears of those people who have been sucked into all this mess. Open up their eyes and their ears, Lord, to see that they have been taken. They have been robbed. There is better for them than this mess. And Lord, we'd ask that you would clean up our governments, statewide and on the national level. Lord, I'd ask that your blood would just cover and wash Washington, D.C. and the whole area like it's never happened before. Sin exposed. Exposed. Righteousness being exposed. And justification for great sin being handed out. Precious God, we pray, we pray, and we, we Lord, we want the, the freedom and the covering by our government to put out the gospel to the rest of the world. So Lord, help us to endure all that we are enduring and possibly get worse, who knows? We will be strong, we declare it, we will be strong. And we will lift up Jesus Christ. He's the only answer. He is King. He is Lord. He is the ruler of all the nations. And he's soon coming. And oh Lord, we can't wait. We're looking up. For you will come this time in a mighty fashion. The whole world will have all their cell phones tuned into it. You will come in the clouds like never has happened before. And there will be a disappearance of the righteous and the unsaved who are disobedient and just won't do it, won't come to you, they will be left. And so, Lord, don't, don't let us miss it. Don't let us miss your rapture when you take care of all the souls that are righteous out of here. Father God, we give you praise for all the workings you are doing in our own lives. Precious God, bring much healing to situations that happen. Don't let us be estranged from our families. Help us, Lord, to be kind and loving and inviting to even the one we know hates us, to just keep putting out that love, and it will melt away. It will melt away all of the sin and unforgiveness. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And all of us will go on with more private prayers. And we give you all the glory for loving us and working out every issue in our life. Be blessed today. I love you so much. Bye-bye.